Hey y'all, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the video that you're about to watch. So I did a very candid interview with a Google certification success story, Jacinta Keenan. And Jacinta is a Google certified educator, level one and level two, as well as recently becoming a Google certified trainer. So if you've been thinking about getting Google certified, you want to hear this interview. So Jacinta shares everything that she went through, the aha moments, and what she learned from the various types of training that she went through. So she attended a face-to-face -face boot camp for level one, and then she joined my level two course as well as eventually moving on to the trainer course to help her reach her goals. So I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. Uh, take a quick listen. It's actually very revealing. I share some things that I have never shared on video before before about my own certification journey, and I hope you really enjoy it. So if you will indulge me a little bit here, <laughs> I, I first of all want to thank you so much, one, for making the time all the way from Tasmania to meet with this Texas girl here <laughs> and to share your Google certification journey. So, you know, I feel like so many people get interested in it, you know, get sparks. Like, what is this thing? That was, that was what happened to me. I was like, what is this Google certified thing everybody's talking about? And I'd go look at it and it was really intimidating. And I was like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm, if I'm good enough for that, but I feel like it's very empowering and I want to help more mm -hmm. educators do it. So, um, so first of all, please tell us who you are and, and what you do, Jacinta. Okay, so my name's Jacinta. I've been a teacher for about 13 years now. Um, when I first started teaching, I was in an early childhood class and we had very much one computer at the back of the room and we shared a projector around so we could project our own laptops to the whiteboard. Um, whereas as the years have progressed, I'm now the digital technologies key teacher in a small kinder to grade six school. I've got a year three class. And as part of my role, I have one day a week where I also help the teachers roll out the digital technologies curriculum and also help them to integrate ICT into their classrooms. So we use iPads and laptops um, and lots of different resources. The kids are one-to-one -one with iPads, but then they've got um, probably one laptop between every two students. So we're almost a two-to-one ratio, which is a massive amount of technology compared to what we had 13 years ago. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. I, there, there are a lot of teachers who will watch this video and be very jealous of that. I can yeah, tell you we're that. Very lucky. Very lucky. So um, in terms of, of using technology and sort of moving into um, the idea of getting Google cert certified, what made you decide to do that? And, and tell me, which certification do you do have? Sorry. Okay, so I have just um, gained my Google Certified Trainer certification. So that's what I, I was only accepted weeks ago, which was really exciting. I guess my journey started with Google three years ago when I went to the one-to-one -one environment in Year 3. So our Year 3 students at our school are the first students to have the one-to-one -one of their own devices. And so I sort of just started playing in Google um, and we had our own school domain, so I was managing that and just playing because I knew the following year our whole system was going Google-wide. So I wanted to prepare myself so I knew what I was doing. Um, and I guess it started out with doing a face-to-face -face boot camp that was offered in Tasmania. And I did my Level 1 certification two years ago, which I found really daunting, and the whole three-hour exam was just way above my attention span to concentrate for three hours was a little bit intense. So I did it with another teacher in our school. Um, and since then, I've wanted to do the level two course. And I was sort of looking for boot camps to be offered, but, but unfortunately they weren't offered in Tasmania. So then when Casey, you introduced your level two course, I jumped on and did that. And it wasn't until I was doing that course that I thought, hang on a minute, I think I can actually go ahead with the trainer. And so that's what I did, and here I am. If I remember correctly, you actually won the course, right? 
Yes, yes. Okay. So I got one for free and paid for the other one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was thinking you, I knew you got one of the giveaways. I couldn't remember which one it was. So Jacinta was actually in on a webinar where I was giving away seats. And um, so that's so cool. And that it in, inspired you to keep going too. So yeah. yeah. Um, to become a Google certified trainer, you have to have level one and level two as well. And so I think that would, that really like, sort of scares people off at first you know yeah. it's like what you're telling me I got to take three exams oh and I have to apply and create this video and do all of this crazy stuff so you know it, it was intimidating for me as well and actually when I got mine a few years ago it was a completely different program and it was very it was the it was really the only kind of certification besides certified teacher which was sort of you know, attending something special at Google, but, um, it, it really shifted my thinking about Google because I'll tell you, I was pretty arrogant. I thought, I know Google, I know this stuff. Yeah. And then I went to a boot camp like you did. And I was like, okay, no, I don't, I don't know all of this stuff. And I feel like it's really, um, arrogant for anyone to think they could ever know Google because you and I just demonstrated that I had some issues <laughs> with with YouTube Live and with Hangouts. We had to go to Plan C with uh, with Zoom today because things were not going my way with Google today. But that that's irony for you. So thank you for sharing that. Can you tell me and tell everyone else about that whole process for trainer because it's pretty involved. And and yeah. what what you did and how how you went through the process yourself. Okay, so I really used um, your course, Casey, to help me break it down because it was really overwhelming. And I think in my mind, I was stuck on doing that video that's only three minutes in length. And I'm like, wow, how am I going to sell myself and show that I'm googly in three minutes? So for me, that was one of the overwhelming parts. But in preparing to become a trainer, I was already doing the training, which is something that I've learned from your course as well, which is written in the teacher centre for Google as well, that you should already be doing the training. So I guess I kept doing the Google training that I was doing with our teachers. So I have a weekly Tech Byte session where they can come along and drop in and I help them with different Google tools and support them in learning new ways to use Google in their classroom. Um, so I started looking at the resources that I create for that and making sure that they were ready to um, be published and being worthwhile for teachers as well. So there was a lot of time spent making the resources and making sure um, I, I had all the bases covered. Um, pedagogy wise, the trainer course was very heavy pedagogy content. So it was not so much you can do this with Google, you can do that with Google. It was more about as a trainer and being a, and in leadership, leading teachers and having demonstrating good pedagogy so for me I didn't find that so hard because I've got a master's in educational leadership so everything sort of matched up in that sense mm -hmm. but it was the video that I found most daunting and the application process as well and just making sure I had all the boxes ticked because I didn't want to go through all the process and then not get accepted yeah so your course was awesome in just making sure I had everything ticked there are so many little things to worry about with that application. And I'll tell you, um, not, not only was I arrogant <laughs> back in the day when I thought I knew Google, but the first time I applied to become a trainer, I was denied. And I've never actually said that on camera before <laughs> because I was so embarrassed. And yeah. I was like, I can't tell people that. They'll think, and I was like, no, you know what? No. I failed forward. If anything, I should at least be an example of it. And I'll tell you why they, they don't give you a lot of feedback if you don't get accepted, but yeah. I, I figured it out pretty quickly. And it was because I wasn't already doing training on Google. I, I had, I was already in a position where I was training teachers, but the focus of my training really wasn't on Google yet. And I hadn't done anything that had Google really in the title. And so I was under the impression I really wanted that stamp of approval so people would yes. want me to come do Google training. And it's really quite the opposite. You've got to put yourself out there. You've got to get the experience and build that resume before you apply. And so when people ask me, you know, how long did it take? 
right? From start to finish. It all depends on where you are. You know, if you, if you haven't built that resume yet, that could take a long time. That could take months or a year or so to get that experience. So how long would you say from, um, level two to trainer, how long did that take you? Um, well, I guess last year I already had my website up and going. So I had a lot of my resources that were already online. When you talk about doing Google specific training, I guess that was true for me as well because I do a lot of training with teachers, but it wasn't necessarily Google specific. It was integrating Google with other apps like Explain Everything or Seesaw and things like that. So I did have to build my base just a little bit more to make sure it was Google specific and really giving teachers the opportunity to dive deeper. So I guess because I already had things set up, and I, it was already in place, it probably took me about three months, I think, from my level two certification to getting the trainer certification. And a lot of that was because it was term time as well. And I sort of made myself the goal that by the end of term, I would submit the application, but it was just doing little bits at a time. So I did the um, demonstration screencast quite early on and had that ready to go. But the first minute where you have to introduce yourself that was one of the last things I did. I actually got some of my students to record my video because oh. I was so embarrassed <laughs> about um, selling myself with adults recording. So I thought, no, the kids will be good. And I just put it out there to my students and said, who wants to record for me? And they did and they did a brilliant job. So, um, yeah, it probably only took me a few months to go through the course and to take this um, trainer assessment as well. I found that once... I had gone through your course. I did do the trainer skills assessment straight away so that everything was still fresh in my mind and then I could concentrate on the application process and putting the video together and answering all the questions for the scenario that you have to do as well. You know, a lot of people, after they've taken the level one exam and the level two exam, what did you think of that trainer skills assessment? It was so less stressful. It was so, it was like, it didn't take, I can't even remember the time limit now, but it didn't take long at all. I literally did it on the couch. Not having to activate your webcam, I think, made it a little bit more calm. And because you weren't actually doing things, you were just answering questions about pedagogy, it was okay. It was a lot less stressful. But in saying that, I did find the level two exam less stressful from the level one. When you say about being ignorant, um, I remember back when I did the first level one boot camp and our trainer told us to go into incognito mode. I'm like, what's that? And I thought I knew Google. I didn't even know what incognito mode was. So I guess in three years it has been a long journey. But as you say, there's so much more to know. And I will never know it all perfectly because it just keeps changing. Um, and I think that's the exciting thing about Google. Yeah, it's, it's the, it's the definitely a, a love, love, love relationship. I love it. And then as soon as I go in, I'm like, like today, something new had yeah. happened. So, um, so did you say three years from level one to trainer? Uh, yes, this is my third year. Yeah. You kind of took a little bit of a break between level one and level two. Yeah, because I was waiting for that face-to-face -face boot camp because I felt like I needed something more. I'm very much a visual learner. So I felt I needed either the face-to-face -face, um, support or videos or some sort of course. So I guess I was just waiting. And if your course hadn't come along, I would have gone interstate to Melbourne or somewhere to do one of the level two boot camps. And I'll tell you, I have taught it face-to-face -face many times and I, I have completely stopped. In fact, I have, I turned down people who asked me to come mm -hmm. teach a boot camp face-to-face. -face. It's, it's so much, it's so it much is. content. And it's hard for me as a trainer. Um, it wears me out. There, there's almost no way I can fit everything into, you know, the two days or whatever it is that you're doing. And even when I was teaching it face to face, I would have people who would take it more than once, not because they didn't learn anything, but because they, they couldn't retain it. Um, and they didn't have anything to go back to. And I was like, this has to go online. You know, so yeah. if, you know, and I, I, no offense to the Google Teacher Center. In fact, I actually wrote a couple of the lessons in there. So I, I'm not knocking it at all. It's great for some people, but there's just so much to know. And that was why I was like, okay, 
there's got to be something, it's got to be self-paced because I would have people in the room who had such a variety of skills. I'd have teachers who'd never, never even really logged into Google who were like brand new Mm -hmm. to people like you who were already training on it. And I'm like, how in the world do I teach and differentiate in a face-to-face session to bring all of those people all up to the same level? And it was, it was just so, um, so hard um, on both sides that I really just decided, okay, I've got, I've got to do this, this online thing. So, but I love that you share um, the timeline because that is, that's probably one of the biggest questions I get is how long does it take? And there is no perfect answer. And as many times as I say that, they still keep asking me, you know, I can tell you how long, Oh, somebody's at the door. That's good. <laughs> Hang on. Let me make sure it's not something I have to sign for. <laughs> Pretty sure it was somebody trying to get me to vote for somebody else. So <laughs> I was like, is this important? That's what happened in my first level one exam too, Casey. The, the doorbell rang and I'm like, no, I can't talk to you right now. And the person wondered why on earth I was being so rude. It's so funny. You know, um, that that camera you know you're talking about how 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 weird it is that that camera is watching you and that's actually one of the tips I'm like don't let the camera freak you out there are not people sitting around at Google just like watching you take a test they're not as much as you would like to think that they don't have enough people to do that for one I can tell you and they don't really want to that's really like a verification you know that you are the one taking the test that you didn't just sign up and then have me sit down and take your test for you. Um, But at the same time, the first time that I did it with the webcam, I was like, I'm going to the bathroom. I would like announce it as if somebody, (laughs) I was like, I don't know who's watching or who's listening, but I'm getting up and walking away from the computer. And I don't know what that means to someone else. So um, yeah, it's just so funny. And, and it can, it can really mess people up, especially people who have test anxiety, you know, it's, it really can. Um, and I, that's why I tell people too, when they ask how hard the exams are, I'm like half the battles getting into this thing. I mean, it really is, you know, some people, like you said, don't even know what an incognito window is and then they get confused. So, um, that's why I've just tried to put together, like basic tips and tell people how to log in and how to do these things. So that it's hopefully not so, because watching that clock is the worst. Yeah. And I think the clock is the worst part because it's just ticking down and ticking down. Yeah. Yeah. The clock, the clock can really, really hurt you. And in fact, the number one reason why people fail is they run out of time. And I think sometimes that's just second guessing yourself which, you know, it's exactly the same reasons that our students mess up on standardized tests too, you know, that they, it's the same thing. So, um, no, I, I'm so excited. And I was so excited the other day when you, when you posted that you became a trainer and I love that you posted it with your emoji and sharing that, that everywhere. So that excitement makes me feel very proud knowing that you were in my course and that, um, that I was able to help you get there. Now, when, um, when you went through the process, of course, you've been through all three now, but how would you say the course, I guess both level two and trainer, because those are the two that you were in, but how would you say that those helped you reach your goals? Okay. I think the level two course, um, I just had so many aha uh, uh, moments. Um, first of all, Google Sheets for me is what I'm terrified of. I just panic about Google Sheets all the time. So I think um, your videos that you supplied with the Google Sheets session, I think for level two, there were three or four videos in the end. I watched those over and over again. And I found because you also shared um, some practice Google Sheets to work with, with your um, Miss Bell's class data it just provided it as a really easy way to practice those pivot tables and to use a few of the sorting and the the little line i've forgotten what they're called now that you put in the plot in the cells um the scatter their little scatter lines scatter plots yeah Um, yes yeah and that provided a really good resource for me Um, i think also how you can apply it to the classroom like for example when we did the google forms and the choose your own um, go to a section based on answer that blew my world because 
at the time my students are learning their times tables and it's what times tables is just one of those things that the kids just have to know and they have to practice and practice is boring um, and so I made Google Forms that if they get the answer wrong, it shows them a video of me showing them how to work out the answer with a raise or skip counting or whatever skills that we're focusing on for that particular times table. And the kids loved it. All of a sudden, they were practicing their times tables and becoming a lot more confident. Um, so then that skill, because it rocked my world so much, I used in my Google Trainer application. So that was the skill that I, so it really linked well the level two course with the trainer course and the skills that I learned in level two I could apply and showcase in my trainer application. That's that's great yeah it's it's so hard to fit like I said you know all those little tips and things like that that's not something I would really have a lot of time to show in a face-to-face -face training and it's one of my favorite Google form tricks. Like when I show yes. that in a presentation, that's, that's literally where the phrase shut the front door, um, yeah. came from to the, in the title of the blog post was because someone said that in my training. And if I could get someone to say that in every one of my trainings, I would be so happy, but they don't. Yeah. Um, so when you get to share that, you know, it's such an exciting moment. And that's what I always tell people who are training. I'm like, Think of those, like you said, the aha moments, the things that made your jaw drop that you learned, share that with other teachers. And sometimes we forget those things too. Like I do, I forget mm -hmm. because I do things so often or I forget about how to do something. I have to remember to share that with teachers. So um, that's, that's awesome. And I'm, I'm so glad that the course was, was useful to you on, on both levels. Um, so since becoming Google certified, I would even go back three years to the very beginning. What would you say has changed? Because a lot of people ask, what's in it for me? Why should I do this? And so, you know, from level one up, what would you say has changed for you? Um, for me, what has changed is my classroom practice. I think it's, um, I think it's one of your sayings where it's not about Google it's about what you do with it. Yeah. Um, so I guess my pedagogy has changed. I know next year we've got a new principal coming to our school and he's a principal who I worked with seven years ago. And my teaching has completely transformed since I started my Google, drop, um, my Google, <laughs> my Google journey. So it's, and I think as well with how I run um, sessions with teachers and how I prepare for them for the things they're going to use in the classroom so I guess a small example is I with my tech bite sessions I also use Google classroom as a platform so all my resources I upload to classroom so that as you say with your courses um, teachers have got a backup so that when I'm not there they can go back to my Google slides and look at the animated gifs and go oh yeah that's how I make a table of contents or oh yeah that's how I use Google forms um, so my practice has changed in that I'm making my resources more available to people and sharing them. And I guess what is happening, I'm very much in that stage of providing things for free. It's not about money at the moment. It's about sharing my love of Google and all that it offers. And it's really nice when you get emails from the other side of the world or messages on Facebook saying, hey, that slideshow you made was awesome. So now... I have teachers, it's not just supporting teachers in my school, but supporting other teachers in our area as well. And I'm able to share resources with them and help them to get started, which I really enjoy. I help, I enjoy helping the teachers to train other teachers. So I guess that's how things have changed since I've um, started the Google journey. I, I would totally agree with that. And, you know, I love, I love helping teachers too. And, people ask me sometimes, okay, Casey, do you use anything besides Google? Because that's all you seem to talk about. But it's like, it's hard not to talk about it because it's so easy to use and everybody's going Google these days. So it's such a hot topic and there's always something new to learn. So I'm always, I mean, like it, you can't learn everything, right? You can't be an expert in everything, but you know, I love what you said about it transforming your classroom. And I think that's what level one and level two, especially are really about. I mean, cause those two are about classroom practice and 
you know, so when, when people ask me about the benefits, I always come back to level one and level two being about application, transforming your classroom. But I also love the fact that you mentioned connecting with educators. So not only through your blog and, you know, on Facebook and things like that, but you're now part of the Google groups for, for, um, for trainer as well. And I think you've only tapped into that because you haven't had trainer all that long, but I think you're going to love the fact that you get access to all the trainers in the world and their resources. Everybody shares, um, you know, that's, it's a fantastic place to go and ask questions when things happen. And so I love that. And you're now going to be in the Google education directory, right? Yes. Yes. Are you there yes, yet? I Have you looked? I'm, that. I'm just waiting for it to go live. Okay. Yeah. I know it sometimes takes a little while and it's really exciting. So you now have the potential if you want to, you know, to bring in additional income by offering training. Of course you could, I mean, you could do that before, but now you've got, you're officially listed by Google, which is like their stamp yeah. of approval. And you know, that's awesome. So I'm hoping someday I'm going to see you over here on my side of the globe. Uh, and training. And then of course I want to come visit. So, (laughs) so we're going to have to find some excuse for me to come to Tasmania. I, yes, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) I, uh, I was in uh, a few different parts of Australia back in April, but, um, definitely didn't make it to Tasmania. Although I met some people who had come over to the teach tech play conference, but, um, yeah, it's, it's exciting. And I, I kind of fell in love with your side of the world. I will tell you that yeah. it's pretty yeah. awesome over yeah. there. So in April, Tasmania wasn't very nice weather wise. So you didn't miss much. <laughs> yes, I heard. And there, there was someone there um, who was a presenter and she's like, it's so cold back home. I'm like, what? This is just like boggling <laughs> my mind. So yeah. um, it's, it's really fun. Now we did mention that you, you have a blog and, um, Tell us about it. Tell us how people can find you. What's the URL and how to get in touch with you. Okay. So also part of um, getting ready for um, becoming a Google trainer. Some, one of my colleagues said to me two years ago, he said, you're doing so much work. You've got to share it with people, get it out there. So because Google was the main um, resource that we're pushing out within our district, I decided to start a Google site. So then I can show teachers how easy it is to update and how quick. So you can find my website at keenonlearning.net. Some of my lovely friends came up with that name based on my surname after a lot of wine. And they're actually joking, but I thought, hey, that's a good idea. So they think it's a little bit funny that I've actually gone with that name. Um, And on my website, as soon as I make a resource, I just chuck it up there and you can use it. and view it and make adjustments if you need as well, because it's all about sharing and being together and helping each other out. That's great. And I love the things that you've been sharing as well. And so I can't wait to see where Keen on Learning goes next. Do you want to leave us with a, a recommendation for someone who's, who's watching this video and thinking, I want to do what she did? What advice do you have? Okay. My advice is to just give it a go to really tap into, I really recommend to do your courses, Casey, because um, the amazing resource now, even though I have finished the courses, I still go back to those courses, particularly when I'm doing a new training session, especially if it's in Google Sheets, to just (laughs) check that I can remember how to do those different skills that I might not be using all the time. So my recommendation is to definitely enrol in one of your courses. Start with one or go with a bundle because you can do it. And there's lots of um, resources and support out there to help you towards their goals. Um, And, yeah, I'm really thankful for everything you've done, Casey. Thank you for helping me in my journey. Oh, my pleasure. I, it, it excites me just to, to help other educators get Google certified and watch you on your, your journey. And I can't wait to see what you do next. So yeah. thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Casey. So I hope you enjoyed that video interview. Jacinta is amazing and I can't wait to see what she does next. But I also can't wait to help you in your Google certification journey. So 
If you are interested in learning more, the first thing you should do is go to getgooglecertified.com. And from there, you'll find all kinds of resources and videos to help you learn more about the Google certification process and finding out what path is right for you. So I hope to see you there. Bye, y'all.